Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. We are back with episode 302 of the Online Success Journey. Our guest today is a successful entrepreneur who is excited to share the very steps they took to build their business. And you will want to subscribe right now and ensure you will never miss a journey like this one. Today we have Paul Chambers. Over 20 years he has built, scaled and sold multiple subscription focused businesses and today runs the largest conference and trade groups focused on the DTC subscription space. Hello Paul. Hello Patience, how are you? Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I'm fine, thank you for coming. The audience are excited to hear your story, but just start by telling us one thing we are going to learn from you today that will help us on our journey to success. So I've got over 20 years of experience in the subscription industry and -hmm. today lead the largest trade association for the direct-to-consumer subscription space in addition to the largest conference in the world around that as well. So I love subscription. I can't wait to hear about that. But let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my audience a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your own business? So I started my entrepreneurial journey when I was, gosh, I was about 10, 12 years old. I started selling candy at school. That's that's where I learned the basics of, you know, buying and selling and the, the art of the upsell and cross-sell and promo. You know, I was taught a lot by my grandfather uh, in high school, launched my very first official business. Uh, building websites and and the rest was history from there uh, over the course of, of time I've run retail stores have uh, you know I started built and sold many different businesses which led me to you know kind of where I'm at today which is running the subscription trade association uh, in addition to a couple other little small side ventures as well what background Paul but why do you do what you do so I have, a, I have a, a passion for business. I have a passion for helping people. And I also have what I think is a common, you know, quote unquote, disease among entrepreneurs, which is entrepreneur never satisfied syndrome. Always trying to, to build to the next thing. Always trying to build to the next level. Uh, I absolutely love it. I mean, there, don't get me wrong. There are days where there's definitely a lot of challenges. There are days where you, you know, finish at the end of the day and you're like, oh my gosh. I don't know if I can I could do this again tomorrow, but you wake up with re-energized and ready to go. Um, and I just you know, just absolutely love it. Let's put man aside. As you mentioned, you've been in this business for 20 years. How do you know you are successful? So that that in itself is a little bit challenging, right? Because of that entrepreneur never satisfied syndrome. And, and the story I often give behind that is, uh, you know, when I was in, I, I started my business in high school. I began building my first business, which was a, a marketing website agency, began building it, you know, continue to build it through college. And, and all through college, I said, you know, I'm going to feel successful when I get our company name on an office door. That'll feel real to me. And so, you know, I graduated college, got our first office space with my business partner at the time. And it's like, oh, this is this is cool. But I wasn't quite satisfied yet. So then I said, you know, I'll feel successful when we have our name on the building. And so we move buildings that are name on a building and, and again, like just reset and I'll feel successful when we have a name on a high rise. So still haven't quite gotten to the high rise point yet. And I'm sure things will reset at that point, but I do try to take a step back from a time to time and I recognize what we've built and what we've done. And, you know, that success relies on our team, our business, my business partners and, and everything that we've done together. Um, you know, I'm proud of what we built. We, we are a leading voice in the subscription space. And so, you know, I think there's different metrics for success along the way. And, you know, just we keep moving those markers. And I think one of the most important things that I've learned is as an entrepreneur is to take a second sometimes to celebrate those successes. Tell my audience about the magic moment. The day it suddenly all went right for you. <laughs> so sometimes there are those days uh, and, and sometimes there, you know, I actually have a, a, a moment where, it was a roller coaster of a day where it felt like it started off feeling like it was one of the worst days. We had no idea what we we're doing. And so when we launched our first conference, our first sub summit conference, 
So this was, we saw a need in the space to build a conference around the direct to consumer subscription industry. We said, let's get that going. And we had confirmed a big name speaker to join us and started marketing that speaker, started telling people that person was going to be there. And that person called us a couple weeks later and said, Hey, you guys are using my name unfairly. I'm out. I'm not speaking at your event anymore. And we're like, Oh my gosh, this is like, this is the anchor to our event. This totally screws up everything. And later that afternoon, we got confirmation from two other big name speakers that they were going to join us. And it was such a roller coaster of a day, like the lowest low to the highest high. And it was at that moment, that was kind of really a pivotal point for us where we're like, cool, this is it. Like we can make this work and we, we got it. And that was really like a magic moment for us where from there forward, we've, we've, been so lucky because you know you get those first two names you can leverage them for speakers you know for other attendees coming other speakers coming and from there forward we've been able to kind of continue to build from there that was that was an interesting magic moment because it went from the worst to the best day wow have you ever worked with that uh, guest who canceled oh yeah it happens you got to sort through and figure it out you know we're coming into our sixth conference this year and one of the things you know there's unique challenges because of covid I mean, we're going to host our event September 21 to 23 this fall. And certainly there's that possibility that somebody will get COVID and not be able to make it. Or they'll have COVID-like symptoms and say, hey, I'm not comfortable coming. Um, And we'll figure it out. I I had a really big name speaker in our last pre-COVID event, Sub Summit 2019, that people look forward to, they're excited about, canceled on me last minute. Like we were hosting the event was kicking off on Monday. He canceled on Friday before. And we're there and, and... you know, I had backup speakers and we do a lot of contingency planning for that reason. And we're doing that again this year. How does it affect you as a person? In in those types of challenging moments, you're asking? Yes. I mean, I, I think it builds character. I think it makes you stronger. I think, you know, at the time it feels like the the world is falling in on you. Um, you know, you're, you're going, what, do we, what can we do? What do we, you know? And I think you know, those are the, the true tests because, if you can sort through those extremely challenging moments and figure them out, then you can figure out anything, you know? And I think that's one of the, one of the the big things is to, you really kind of try and keep your head up as best you can. I mean, it's challenging, right? There are times where I'm like, I just want to bury my head in the sand and just let this either go away or let somebody else deal with it. But those options don't exist. And so you just got to figure it out. I think the best thing you can do as a leader, as an entrepreneur is to stay positive focus on solving the problem and move forward. And and my wife and I always have this discussion where she'll come home at night and share with me the woes of her day. She's a teacher. So she'll talk about, you know, bad student or some challenge with another teacher and, and I'll try and fix it for her. And she says to me, you know, I don't want you to fix my problem. I just want you to listen to me. And that's where I have to like pull myself out of my entrepreneur mode and go into husband mode and just listen. But, you know, she, that's all, that's all she wants is to listen. But my, by my nature, I'm built to problem solve. And that's what I love doing. And I think, you know, that's, that can get you through anything. Thank you for sharing. As you mentioned, you've been in this business for a long time. You have met many entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs. Can anyone be an entrepreneur or are some people more cut out for it than others? You know, I think, you know, Mark Cuban is famous for saying this on Shark Tank. You're, you know, he'll call some people entrepreneurs versus entrepreneurs. And, and, you know, that exists out there. And, and I think also, you know, I, I mean, I've hired so many team members over the years that, you know, I've had various different conversations. I remember talking to one team member one time saying, you know, Hey, you know, the, the next step for you is to advance into a management role. And he said, I don't want to be a manager. I just, I like doing what I'm doing every day. That just doesn't interest me in leading people. So I think it's, I think being an entrepreneur is a special quality. It's a, you know, there's, and there's different levels of it. There's solo entrepreneurs and some people are that their whole lives. There's entrepreneurs that build small businesses, medium sized businesses. There's entrepreneurs that take companies public. And I think we all possess different skills and talents to lead in different directions. And so I, I think, yes, there's people who are cut out for it. And then yes, there are people who aren't cut out for it. And then within that, there's different levels. What have you learned from business as a whole? That's a, that's a loaded question. I, I feel like there's too many things to cover in our time here. Um, <laughs> I've learned that, you know, sometimes being patient uh, is, is important and understanding that things take time to build. Uh, I understand, you know, I've learned that, you know, 
processes and procedures can go a long way and that failing to plan is planning to fail. Uh, I've witnessed that way too many times where, you know, running and gunning and just kind of trying to figure things out along the way. Well, it sounds like a good idea and it can work at times. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of times where I've done that and it works, but if you can take the time and you can afford the time to plan things out, then that, you know, has much greater long-term effects. A year ago, we set out on a mission at Subta, our subscription trade association to build out our content strategy. And at the beginning of it, I said to my team, I want to walk into the room, sit down for a recording and then walk out and then the rest happens. But at that time, that wasn't the case. We couldn't do that, right? We were a smaller team. We had to be a little scrappy. I'd get the recordings going. I'd get the lights set up. I'd save the recordings to the flight, you know, to the server. And now we focused the last year on building out our processes behind it all. So I walk into the studio. Bradley already has all the lights set up. The recording's ready to go. I walk out, the recording gets saved to a server. Chris gets him, he does a rough edit. He sends it over to Bradley, does a final edit, sends it to Jen to post to social media. And that didn't happen overnight. We spent a year building out these processes and the documentation behind it. So planning and putting those things in place, sometimes it takes time and keep focused on it. What are you still doing in the way you work that you just know you have to stop doing? I need to delegate more sometimes. I I can do everything. Um that's that's a, a, a superpower and, and probably my kryptonite at the same time, right? I have the ability to go in and edit WordPress pages. I can open Photoshop and, and fix a photo. I can do the video editing too, but that's distracting me from what I need to be doing is leading, planning, you know, looking at things strategically. And, you know, sometimes in my head, it's, you know, gosh, I can just do this real quick. It'll get done. Uh, but that's not the best approach. Right. The best approach is asking for help, asking a team member to help get that done, assigning the tasks to various different people. I've gotten better at it, but it still is a challenge. Right. And that's for me, that's just my continued focus right now. What is the most dangerous belief an entrepreneur can have? You know, I, I think, you know, the it, it's challenging sometimes as an entrepreneur to um, to to overlook all the little details. I think, you know, focusing, sometimes focusing on just the bigger picture and the end goal can be detrimental to looking at all the steps in between um, and, and missing those, you know, here's how we're going to get to from point A to point B. And just saying, I want to start a podcast and just starting recording podcasts out there is fine, but what's the purpose of the podcast? What's the reason behind it? And, you know, what are you trying to achieve? And I think that sometimes is a, is a challenge as an entrepreneur, you know, understanding all the strategic reasons for why you're doing what you're doing. How do you start a subscription focused business? There's a lot of different ways and it depends on the type of subscription. You know, sub to we identify six segments of subscription ranging from streaming, uh, medium publication, all the way down to subscription box and subscribe and save. When you're talking about physical subscriptions, there's a lot of great tools out there that people can use. There's a company called Crate Joy where anybody can spin up a, a, a subscription box or a subscribe and save focused company almost overnight. Uh, there's Shopify, which has made turning on e-commerce so much easier. And then on top of Shopify, you layer in something like Recharge or Bold, uh, Order Groove, one of those uh, subscription systems that will make that that much easier. And in the last decade, even the last like five years, how far we've come and how much easier it is for people to start that up. Uh, that's, that's come a long way. If you're starting a subscription box, I tell people plan out your first year of boxes, you know, get what that experience is going to look like and feel like and, and plan that out. And there's great resources out there like subscription box school or subscription box boot camp. I mean, there's tons of awesome resources out there or people can join Subta for free. Uh, or even get a premium membership at $9 a month and just start learning from the community, this great Facebook group. So there's a lot of different steps, but first coming up with that concept is going to be the most important piece and then using those tools to build it from there. If you could rerun the first year of your business, what would you definitely know to do? I don't live life with a lot of regrets and I, I try not to to dwell on the challenge, you know, the mistakes that I've made. Um, I mean, look, I started my first business when I was 16, like my first official business. And I borrowed $10,000 from my grandfather to start an internet service provider. I had no idea what I was doing. 
I didn't have, I bought all the wrong equipment and I had to figure out a way to repay them. So I started building websites. So reflecting back on that and a, a lesson that still applies to anyone today is I would have done a lot more research. I'd done an extensive amount of research and actually my grandfather kept pushing back on me saying, well, what about this? What about that? Made me build a pro forma. And I was thankful for all of that, but I still didn't know what I didn't know. And what I could have done was tapped into a network or talk to people, talk to more people. And look, these are the early days of the internet. So it wasn't as easy as it is today to, to message someone on LinkedIn or to find somebody on Facebook or the community wasn't as, as it is today. So now people have that at their fingertips. If you want to start a business, immerse yourself in that space, immerse yourself in that world and learn as much as you can and do as much research as possible. In your businesses, do you have like a mentor or a coach yourself? Oh, no, I, I definitely have relied on a lot of different mentors and coaches over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I belong to groups like Vistage and EO Entrepreneurs Organization. Uh, those are super, super helpful. Having that peer group of like-minded individuals. Another one would be YPO, Young Professionals Organization. So I always encourage that. Uh, I have a business coach that I've worked with for the last you know, five, six, I think seven years now, uh, who's been super helpful. And prior to him, I've had other business coaches. And I think that's super important to have that peer group, to have that network, to have those outside individuals that you can turn to as sanity checks as support for, you know, I'm not sure what to do next uh, as the, you know, the, the people that when you are really like struggling, knowing that they're having the same struggles sometimes really, really helps. So having that network in various different forms and functions is super helpful. What is the most valuable thing your networkers has told you? For me, oftentimes it has been the, you're not alone in this <laughs> recognition of, you know, if I've had a, a challenge with an employee um, turning to my network and, and talking through that, or if I had a challenge with a business partner in the past, turning to not, my network and talking about that, I think, you know, that's the biggest reassurance sometimes as an entrepreneur, knowing that somebody else has maybe been through that or similar challenge before and working through that together. Um, but one of the biggest pieces of advice I got one day was this is early in my career. I was trying to make a go of a business that just wasn't quite going the way I wanted it to. And the entrepreneur told me, he said, sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and stop believing your own BS. Because I kept trying to make the business work and saying like, well, if I just do this, I can make it work. And if I just do this, and he's like, you need to, you need to really look at yourself in the mirror and say, are you, are you giving yourself a bunch of BS or is this actually the truth? And he was right. I was feeding myself lines to try and make it believable that I could make it work, which was never really going to work. And so that to me has stood with me kind of the rest of my life was something I, I look back on. What is one thing that has contributed to your success? Um, I think good mentors over the years, good business partners over the years, uh, and being an early mover in spaces at times and continuing to kind of push those levers to continue to get us to grow. Um, you know, just, just really focusing on, on those pieces as continue to accelerate us and get us there. Um, you know, if you see an opportunity and you know, like we, we are the leaders in the direct consumer subscription space. And so because of that, you know, we're not letting our foot off the gas pedal. We want to continue to support and grow this community. And, and that's been exciting for us. What grounds you? Uh, I think, you know, my wife keeps me pretty grounded <laughs> and my family and my kids, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the, you can have some of the most challenging moments in business and you get home and you see those little smiling faces. And I say to my wife, you know, we could live in a cardboard box. I could lose everything tomorrow. I don't want to, but I could, you know, and, <laughs> and as long as we still have each other and these little faces here, that's all that matters. You know, I love what I do. I will always continue to fight for what I do. Um, but, you know, the family is always most important. How can someone scale their subscription business? So that's, there's a lot of different ways to look at that. And, you know, obviously when you look at a subscription business, there are really three key areas you need to always focus on. Uh, obviously the operation side, right? How it's running, how it's going. Then you look at acquisition. How are you acquiring people and bringing them into the mix of, you know, being a subscriber and just as important acquisition, sometimes if not more important is retention, 
you know, keeping those subscribers around because the best source of new business is referrals, you know, people telling them about other people. And so if you do what you need to do to keep them happy, to keep them engaged, to keep them as subscribers, they're going to continue to tell more people, which leads to great acquisitions in there as well. But when you look at, you know, how do you, how do you grow that business as a whole? There's so many different channels. Every business varies in the way to success there, whether it be looking at Facebook advertising, organics, SEO, uh, working with influencers, you know, really focusing on your own content strategy, you know, it depends on the space. If you're in a crowded space, you need to, maybe you need to fight for influencers and get that recognition. If you're in a new and emerging space, working on your content, your organic strategy, laying that groundwork for success as that starts to accelerate will be huge. So it really, it really varies per business, but there's so many great ways out there now. What is the most important question to ask someone who has bought from you? I often say, ask questions to get to answers. Um, and that's not my line. That's the line I've, I've learned from many different successful individuals over the years. And so I, I like to ask a lot of questions about what their goals are, what they're trying to achieve, um, where they're trying to go, because everybody has different focuses. Some people want to build a lifestyle business. So if you want to start a subscription business, that's going to pay you a salary, not be super stressful. And maybe it's a couple thousand subscribers and you're happy with that. But if you want to build a, a company, you're going to be able to take public. That looks way different. So understanding what their goals or initiatives are, what drives them, you know, those are, those are the start, you know, the start of the questions you need to ask to get to what the solutions are behind all that. What is one thing no one knows about you? Well, if I told you, then everyone will know it. You create something <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> that, that in itself is true. Um, what's one thing nobody knows about me? So a lot of people don't know. I used to own a chain of gourmet popcorn stores. Uh, and that was a, a, I had a five-year run at that from 2005 to 2010. And it was a franchise system that I, I got into. And you can see it on my LinkedIn profile, I think. But it's a little bit deep at this point. And, uh, the fun little thing behind that is like, I don't really like popcorn that much, but I loved, re I was interested in retail. I was interested in this, helping this brand grow at the time. And what was fun is because I was so early, I was able to build out a really interesting process and systems behind it. Ultimately that business was killed by the 2008 downturn and the franchise or no longer really wanting to be in the franchise business. And we had a, a mutual separation that we got to work out for everybody in the end. And so um, it was a fun part of the journey and one that, you know, had some challenges, but I'll never look back on a regret. Just learn some lessons and move forward. Let's talk about your business. Tell us more about it. So the subscription trade association represents all the direct to consumer subscription companies out there. So anything you subscribe to in your life personally, those are the companies that we represent from Netflix and Sling TV to Dollar Shave Club and FabFitFun. We like to help those companies grow, accelerate, get better and build. And it doesn't need to be those big behemoths I just mentioned. There are people that come in with ideas and are ready to get started uh, to those that are growing and scaling and, and have reached some critical mass all the way up to the kind of the enterprise level publicly traded companies out there. And it's been a really fun year to watch too, because you have companies like Bark and Chewy and Vimeo went public and, you know, Stitch Fix. And so, so many amazing companies in subscription. And that's the theme of our upcoming sub summit event is shaping the future. We see subscription being the leading edge of transactional commerce of e-commerce going forward. Com the biggest companies in the world, Apple, Tesla are betting on the future of their business in subscription. So, you know, it's a really exciting space. And so Subtel represents that. People can join and get resources from us. They can attend our conferences. They can attend our webinars. And, you know, we're really excited to help keep that community growing. And how can we connect with you and find this subscription company? So anybody can go to subta.com. That's S-U-B-T-A.com. They can join for free. There's a, a $9 a month premium membership where you get even more access to awesome stuff. Uh, from there, we have links to all of our channels. They can email us, let's talk at subta.com at any time. And you can find me personally across most of the social media channels, including LinkedIn and all the other places. Thank you. There will be more from Paul in a moment. If you are listening to this on a podcasting platform and you are encouraged by Paul's journey, 
Please go to our website at onlinesuccessjourney.com. The site has tons of audio clips from hundreds of successful entrepreneurs' guests' journeys all there to help you find the path to your own online success journey. The site offers exclusive members-only content and you can join absolutely free and be part of this amazing online success community today. Check it out. That's onlinesuccessjourney.com. Now, Paul, I would love for you to share more with my audience if you are up for it. Absolutely. Thank you. Do you like movies or books? Uh, I like books, but I'm more of a movie guy because every time I try and sit down and read a book, inevitably a small child comes up and starts needing something from me. <laughs> Tell us what is your favorite movie that has some relevance to being an entrepreneur. I love the documentary Revenge of the Electric Car. Uh, it talks about the early days of Tesla. It talks about, you know, kind of how the auto industry killed the electric car initially. And there's a moment in there where you see Elon Musk walk into the Tesla factory. They're building the Roadster, the first Tesla car. And he puts his hands on top of his head because he realizes how in trouble they are at that moment. And you look at where they were at that, at that point in time to where they are now. And you see like the fight that he put into building that business and bi- building to where they're going. It certainly was not an easy journey for him. Uh, so that, that for me resonates a lot because it's like, wow, you know, every, every great entrepreneur has had their struggles and they were on the brink of bankruptcy. If your business was down to its last $100, how would you invest it? That's a, that's a tough call because, you know, you always say you want to invest in your people. Um, you know, and $100 doesn't go as, as far today <laughs> as it once did, I feel like, um, you know, with, you know, six figures payroll every two weeks. Um, but you know, I, I think, you know, if I could find a way to, yeah, and every business I have is different. So in in one business I'd invest in, you know, maybe some marketing spend, but if there's something I needed out there, if there's a service I could, I could buy from a person to help accelerate that, then that would be something I would do. Um, but I think, you know, marketing is always a good place to, to put those dollars. What is the best business book you have ever read? I refer back to death by meeting a lot. There's a, it was a great meeting structure that I've run in the past. I've enjoyed it. You know, there's some, some great books out there, you know, rocket fuel by Gina Wickman is another good one. Um, and then double, double, uh, by Cameron Harold, that one always resonated with me as well. And those are some older books, but they're just, they're kind of timeless. If you are going to keep a note to yourself in your pocket every day, what would be written on it? Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> it depends on the day, but uh, I, I think there's some days where, you know, it's like, it'll be fine. You're going to be okay. <laughs> my my wife is known amongst her friends saying, we got this, we got Aww. this, you know, like, and, and I love that line because he's right. You know, like we'll figure this out. We got this. And you know, I'd probably, I'd probably go with that line. What is your next chapter? You know, the next chapter is us continuing to to build Subta to help be that leading voice in the subscription economy for the commu- for the community, um, and and helping those businesses. Uh, I there there are two big goals that I have for what we're doing. Number one is to bring Elon Musk to our stage at Sub Summit, um, and we'll get there with that. You know, when the timing is right. But number two, and it probably is actually number one, is to fix Comcast customer care problem. Probably one of the the worst customer experiences in the world and one of the biggest subscription companies in the world. And I believe through our conferences and through what we're building at Subta, we can find a way to help them. Because if we can impact that, we can impact millions of lives. Because I can't tell you how many people I've met that have been so mad and have had their days and lives ruined by Xfinity and, and Comcast. I remember my grandmother telling me one time how she called them about her bill and they said they'd fix something. And she went to hang up the phone with them and the guy thought he disconnected and he didn't. And he said, well, I just took care of this old lady. I gave her a reduction in her bill. She's going to be dead soon anyway. (gasps) And that to me is a a major flaw in leadership at an organization. And the, the crazy thing is, I don't think that culture has changed at Comcast. And that was a decade ago. And so that's my personal mission is to help them realize how bad they are and help them fix that. And then the lives we can impact will will continue on from there. Do you feel like you succeeded or like you're only on the way? I think both. Um, we definitely have, you know, it's, 
I'd be foolish to not celebrate the successes, um, but there's still a long way to go. Have you enjoyed the journey? Yeah, absolutely. I 100% have enjoyed the journey. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's of course been filled with its, its moments, but, um, I always say I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change anything. Will you ever stop? I, my grandfather retired at, you know, I think 73 and wow. he started, you know, doing woodworking at home and things like that. And I think that was ultimately like, he wasn't an entrepreneur, but he, he led many, many large companies. And I just noticed like mentally he slowed down after that and physically it was almost like as soon as he retired and I, you know, like, look, at some point I'll, I'll slow down from what I'm doing in this pace, but I'll never stop. I mean, whether it be consulting or growing a small side business or something, I think this is in my blood for the rest of my life. Remind us how we can connect with you. You can always find us at subta.com. That's S U B T A.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn and I'm always happy to connect. Paul, it's been great to have you to share your online success journey with us. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. You are welcome. That's a wrap. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Paul. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Patience and her guest and want you to know there are hundreds of episodes available at OnlineSuccessJourney.com. Patience would like to thank you for listening to the podcast, and she has a free gift for you on her website, including an audio compilation of her guests' best tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. Additionally, there are special clips of over 250 episodes that have never aired on the podcast, and they're only available to members of the online success journey. Check the website and click on Join Now to get free and instant access. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed on your favorite platform to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review the podcast at iTunes and other sites. We appreciate your help and your willingness to share your journey. One last thing, if you're feeling a bit lost or overwhelmed on your own journey, Patience can help. Check out her course on clarity while you're at the website. Finding clarity is a great way to get back on the right path. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.